Hello everyone, welcome to Avipedia. This is Abhishek Sharma and today we are recording the second lecture of Abhishek's take. Now today's topic is Evolving Politics and Science of COVID-19 Part 1, Important Terminology and Highlights. This particular series will continue along with Abhishek's take. Now COVID-19 as you know is a politically, scientifically, economically and socially an evolving situation. So as it evolves, we will be covering out all the important terminology and highlights alongside this situation. So moving on with today's lecture, the core concerns that we have with respect to the politics and the science part of COVID-19 is what will be the changing geopolitical equations and scientifically what understanding do we really have with respect to the COVID-19. Now, perhaps it is too early to judge the scope and long-term impact of COVID-19 on the geopolitical landscape, but nevertheless, definitely it is going to have global political and strategic effects. Now, the uncertainty that has been brought by COVID-19 has added to the critical layer of turbulence in the prevailing global order that was already riddled with the US trade tensions with China, that was already riddled by high ambitions running in the Chinese political space, and under President Xi Jinping, the kind of uh, political attitude that has been shown by the Chinese government lately. So let's discuss this issue in detail. Now moving forward, we can see that there's a lack of international cooperation and trust deficit to tackle the COVID-19 crisis in the present day situation. Notably, the US has shown no inclination to play a leadership role to harness international cooperation at this critical juncture because it remains the most affected country with respect to the COVID-19 disease. Now, China has also blocked the discussions in the UN Security Council on this issue. At times, we have heard President Trump calling it a Chinese virus and that has created a geopolitics of its own. Now, the NATO Secretary General uh, Jens Stoltenberg has pointed out in the uh, last week's web conference of defense ministers that the geopolitical effects of this pandemic could be significant. Now, moving on, this pandemic of fear may deepen an ongoing shift towards increased anarchy reflected in everyone for himself and could further energize the process of weakening international institutions and agreements. Even if China emerges relatively better in the economic terms over the longer term, it will have to contend with the consequences of the worldwide resentment that it has generated as it is seen as the main cause of this particular predicament that each one of us is facing right now. Now, what is the evolving perspective with respect to this COVID-19 situation at the political level? If we see even prior to the COVID-19 crisis as it is, Trump's trade war with China was a manifestation of the narrative gaining traction domestically within the US of China's essential malfeasance vis-a-vis -vis trade relations. This has been further strengthened by the COVID-19. A similar narrative is gaining strength in East Asia, ASEAN, India, Africa and EU. If you remember, Japan lately announced a $2.2 billion package and asking all its industry to come out of China. Any kind of relocation cost will be borne by the Japanese government. A similar move is being considered by many governments. Recently, last week, Australia kind of limited the FDI that can come from China into its country. Same was the scenario within India. Now, moving on, there is a growing realization and acknowledgement of the predatory nature of China under the leadership of President Xi Jinping. And the present pattern of over-dependence on China is likely to see a pushback from most of the major economies on account of its concomitant hazard. This may also strengthen the regional and global alignments to China's disadvantage. Now, China's One Belt, One Road project could face opposition to a degree where it may either be stalled or abandoned altogether. Now, the COVID-19 has therefore unequivocally eroded China's legitimacy and trust that is necessary to sustain itself as a global power. Because unless and until you are accepted as a global leader, as a global power, your trust, your legitimacy does not come about okay now moving on now china's effort to achieve a global geopolitical dominance vis-a-vis -vis the us could be further hindered if major countries shed their ambivalence regarding china excepting russia of course because 
it has a huge reliance on China right now, which is geographically there. Many countries like US, Canada, Japan, Australia, Kazakhstan, Kenya, South Africa, even India, including the regional groupings such as ASEAN and EU, are now reconsidering their political and economic ties with China already as we speak. Now, recently, some of the newspaper highlights which I have picked up for you that I'm taking up in this uh, series as well. So, Donald Trump warns of consequences if China is knowingly responsible for the coronavirus. This was there in today's live mint. Now, Washington and Beijing have repeatedly sparred in public over the virus and Trump initially lavished praise on China and his counterpart Xi Jinping for their response. But lately, he has been calling it Chinese virus and this has ramped up the political rhetoric on the same. Now, at the same time, however, the White House officials are mindful that this can cause a potential backlash because uh, US is very much dependent upon China for the personal protection equipment uh, which is needed for the American medical workers right now that are dealing with this COVID-19 situation at the ground level. Moving on, another news that was shown today is walling of China, India's changes, India changes FDI policy to block threat. Now I have picked this up from the Press Information Bureau website and it says that presently the revised position is this in our FDI policy that a non-resident entity can invest in India subject to FDI policy except in those sectors which are prohibited. However, an entity of a country, now this is the new thing that they have inserted, entity of a country which shares land border with India or where the beneficial owner which shares the land border in India or where the beneficial owner of an investment into India is situated in or is a citizen of any such country can invest only under the government rule. Basically meaning all our neighboring countries without you know highlighting China as it is will not be able to come in terms of FTI through an automatic route that will go through the government route. That is the prior approval will be necessary. Now further a citizen of Pakistan or an entity incorporated in Pakistan can invest only under the government route in the sectors or activities other than defense, space, atomic energy, and sectors or activities prohibited for foreign investment. Now, this clause is pretty much the same. Moving on, in the event of transfer of ownership of any existing or future FDI in an entity in India directly or indirectly resulting in the beneficial ownership falling Within the restriction purview of the previous clause, such subsequent changes in beneficial ownership will also require government approval. Prior to this, this was also under the automatic route. Basically, two changes have been made. Those countries which share land border with India, any kind of FDI that is coming from these countries into India will be now through the government approval route. Any kind of uh, future uh, FDI or the transfer of that FDI which is happening in India will also be through government route. So this is where the government is creating a checkpoint for any kind of aggressive Chinese tactics or takeovers of Indian firms. Recently, we know that the 1% uh, stake was taken up by the Chinese in, uh, in the HDFC bank. And this was a cause of concern for the Indian government that led to this particular trigger. Moving on. Now, coming to the science part of this whole uh, COVID-19 situation, now China's Wuhan Institute of Virology, the lab at the core of the coronavirus controversy. Now, this was one of the uh, ideas that was picked up by the New York Times. So, uh, what is the science behind this particular COVID-19? How far do we know the origin and what do we know about the transfer of COVID-19 into humans? So, this is the science part that we need to be dealing with. Okay. Now, the institute uh, is home to China Center for Virus Culture Collection and it is the largest virus bank in Asia which preserves more than 1500 strains according to its website. The complex contains Asia's first maximum security lab equipped to handle class 4 pathogens that is basically dangerous viruses that pose a high risk of person to person transmission such as Ebola. Now, Virus, uh, various conspiracy theories have been created with respect to the alleged origin of the coronavirus in the lab. And uh, But we all need to have a considerable investigation into this particular thing that what really led to its origin. Now, David Heyman, that is Professor of Infectious Disease Epidemiology at London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, has stated that the origin can be traced to 
closely to the bat virus but there are many theories of how humans could have been infected and i do not think them uh, of them are able to you know have been substantiated at this time basically we don't have anything conclusive on it now in the world economic forum website if you go for it now they are talking about coronavirus origin in terms of two basic uh, viruses coming together to have created a separate virus that is covid-19 let's look into this particular thing now this uh, facts that i'm stating henceforth are presented at world economic forum website now let's look into this now originally scientists believed that the virus may have developed in bats and later the pangolins however genomic comparison suggests that sars and cov2 virus is a result of the recombination between two different viruses meaning the exact origin of the virus is still unclear now this is the name that they are putting in for the covid virus that is it is sars cov2 virus okay now the sars cov2 genome was rapidly sequenced by chinese researchers it is an rna molecule of about 30000 bases as you remember you know in the rna itself you have a uh, different kind of uh, uh, you know bases which create a particular rna okay now it contains 15 genes including the s gene remember this one for your prelims which codes for a protein located on the surface of the viral envelope and this s gene is basically responsible for helping it to transmit to humans now look at the virus strain for a while now the virus associated with the outbreak originated in wuhan china has been designated as severe acute respiratory syndrome corona virus 2 so this is the full form of the sars cov2 nomenclature that has been now associated with covid-19 now there is a spike glycoprotein that you can see on this uh, particular virus that is s gene now this s gene is basically responsible for helping this virus to attach to the human host and that's how it spreads now moving on comparative genomic analysis have shown that the sars cov2 belongs to a group of beta corona viruses and that it is very close to the sars cov responsible for an epidemic of acute pneumonia which appeared in november 2002 in again chinese province of guangdong and then spread to 29 countries in 2003 now the picture that you see uh, on the right side of the screen it is known that the bats of the genus rhinolophus that potentially several cave species uh, were the reservoir of the virus and that a small uh, carnivore palm civet may have served as an intermediate host between bats and the first human case now this is for your sars cov virus now what happened in case of sars cov 2 now let's look into that on february 7 2020 we learned at that means world economic forum the scientific community and everyone of us that a virus even closer to sars cov 2 had been discovered in the pangolin with 99% genomic concordance reported this suggested a more likely reservoir than the bats so basically rather than the bats now it is believed that the pangolin is the reservoir for the sars cov2 virus or the covid-19 now the corona virus isolated from pangolin is similar at 99% in a specific region of the s protein remember this is the protein that we talked about that is leading uh, to the transmission of this virus into the human beings now this means that the corona virus isolated from the pangolin is capable of entering human cells whereas the one isolated from the bat is not in addition the genomic comparison suggests that the sars cov2 is the result of a recombination between two different viruses one close to ratg13 and the other closer to the pangolin virus now this is the latest research that is coming up on the covid-19 remember the name of this viral strains for your examination they are very important okay now at the end of this lecture two major questions on the scientific part remains unanswered till date that is in which organism did this recombination occur and above all under what conditions did the recombination take place were they the lab conditions as is being uh, you know all conspired in the wuhan and or is it happening in the nature itself or the exploitary practices that humans uh today are doing with the nature what really led to this recombination of the viruses that still remains to be answered 
as the political and the economic situation of this particular virus keeps on evolving we have to see what impact it brings upon the geopolitics and what is the typical science of it that's why we will be continuing this series of the politics and science of covid-19 along with the emerging picture on a weekly basis thank you so much this is me abhishek sharma signing off if you have any other queries with respect to covid-19 you can always follow the ministry of health and family welfare website don't go for any kind of rumors that you hear on whatsapp or facebook the data that i have taken is belonging to world economic forum website it is belonging to credible newspapers and inputs such as live mint those are the data that we are still trusting upon for reliable information with respect to this pandemic if you need any other insights into this particular issue you can write in to me at abhishekatabhmanu.com you can follow me on my telegram channel the link is given you can search it on telegram through ias_pcs_hcs don't forget to like subscribe and share this video with your friends thank you so much for tuning in this is me abhishek sharma signing off all the best for your preparation of exams thank you